Okay, in this video we're going to create what's called a dashboard, a business intelligence dashboard that is kind of a dynamic um, group of charts and tables. And we're going to use a Microsoft product, Power BI Desktop, to do it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to, um, from the course website on Canvas, download these the zip file um, of Excel files, the zip folder of Excel files, and this um, Excel spreadsheet. Um, so let's just go ahead and download this. It's a compressed zip folder, so you have to um, download it. And then once it's downloaded to your desktop, you can open it. And this is the unzip version of it. And this is the zip version of it. I got two, I've done this before, so obviously I got two versions of it. So the little zipper means it's been compressed. So it's faster transmission over uh, the internet. But you can double click on it. And then you can see that there's a unzip version inside of it. And we want to place that in, I'm going to place it in my H drive. So I'm going to cl right click here, open new window. So I have my H drive over here. And all Westminster students and faculty have one. So I'm just going to drag it over to here, but you can see that I already have a copy of it. So I can go ahead and close my download folder. And then I also want to download the Excel file, this Excel file here. So I can click on download. Did I click on download? There it goes. And then <laughs> here's my H drive, Westminster H drive, and my download folder. I have it right here, so I'm going to drag this over to here, and you can see it's right there, right? Okay, so there are my files there in the zip folder, and this is that file I just downloaded from Canvas. So I have this folder that's unzipped, and I have this Excel file right there. Now I'm going to drag both of these into the Power BI tutorial folder. I'm going to drag this one I just downloaded by itself into the Power BI tutorial folder. <clears throat> so now when I open up Power BI tutorial folder, I see my source files and I see this file. Now this does not go into here. And the reason why I say that is you can imagine imagine that this folder here is on your company server. And in this folder is all is are the files for each one of your states where you have stores. So these could be register um, spreadsheets. Um, so at the end of the day, um, your Arizona stores will push a button that uploads their data to the spreadsheet. And what it'll look like is this. Okay, so on 11-14-2016, um, this store right here in zip code 85001 sold one fun fly for 495 so you can imagine that this stuff comes from cash registers at your various stores and then at the end of it every day um, this spreadsheet will just get longer and longer and longer okay and I think if we order it by date it might be already ordered by date if we order it by date, we see a bunch of transactions being uploaded 
to this particular file for all your Arizona stores. So these are all the transactions for 10-1. There's quite a few of them, right? Whoop, 10-1. How many transactions do we have here for October 1st? For October 1st, we have all of these transactions. So if we set the spreadsheet up in our data architecture, if we spread, set the spreadsheet up to receive all our sales information from all of our Arizona stores, and this was the first day that we did it, we would get the spreadsheet would be populated with this data. But then the next day, when we open up the spreadsheet, we have additional transactions. So every day the spreadsheet gets updated. And that's the case for California stores, Nevada stores, New Mexico stores, Oregon stores, and Washington stores. So every uh, at the end of business every day, all of our new transactions will be downloaded for our Arizona stores into this file. For all of our California stores, at the end of the day, this spreadsheet will be uploaded. So this is part of our data architecture, right? And maybe these files are housed on our server at our headquarters, wherever that happens to be, right? Okay. And then this file here is kind of a static file. And the reason why I say that is because it gives us the name of the store manager and the zip code. And if we have happy employees that are well paid and doing great jobs, our managers aren't going to want to leave. We're going to try to keep them, right? So the only time this will change is if one of these managers quits and goes to a different company. So as long as we treat our, our employees right, we give them pay raises and reward them, maybe we keep them for a long period of time. So this is kind of a static file, unlike the previous one. Now, if we add a new store location, we would enter a new zip code here, and the manage the name of that manager's, um, the name of that store manager's, right, store manager's name. So the only way this particular file changes is if this person leaves, and we hire a new manager for that particular location, or if we add a new store. And we have to add that particular new store's manager's name. So this is a pretty static file. Now the problem with this is we have two worksheets here, right? So we have this kind of like layout that I got from this really cool website, emt1360.com, I think it is. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here and you, and you can use this if you want to help you with this tutorial. But we're going to create this dashboard. So th this, these objects here can will end up being imported into Power BI Desktop. And then we have this worksheet with this information here. But we've also formatted this information here as an Excel table. And we can view that by going to Formulas and looking at Name Manager. So this table right here we've called DZ zip managers right and you'll see that when we import it into power bi desktop but this worksheet is called manager table so this right this whole thing here this whole worksheet right this whole worksheet is an object named manager table then we have this table which is an object named DZ managers, DZ, DZIP managers. So this object has an object, and then we have this object, right? And if these are graph, or if these are uh, pictures, then we got some more objects, okay? Now, if you look at the, um, if you look at the Arizona spreadsheet, we got some junk in here. I don't know what happened here, but in sheet one, we have some stuff here. Right, so this is considered an object. Sheet two has some garbage in here. And then Arizona, this is what we want to import into Power BI Desktop, this thing here. But we'll end up importing sheet one and sheet two, and then this table and this table. So if we go to 
formulas, name manager. See, these things are all objects. We're going to end up importing them into Power BI desktop. And we got to filter that out because we don't want um, this random stuff, which I call garbage, to pollute our dashboard. Okay. And we can, we can do all that filtering in Power BI desktop. Okay, so that's basically what we're going to do, right? So let me go ahead and close out um, the um, Canvas page. This is what Power BI Desktop looks like. Um, I opened it by just clicking on um, search and then typing Powerball or Power BI. And I just clicked on here. And then you got to log in. When you log into this, you have to use a Microsoft um, account. And my Microsoft account is tied to my Westminster account. So I use my Westminster login credentials when I open this. So I'm all logged in. You can see I'm logged in right here. And you can see my Westminster account there. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the data. Okay. Okay. So we're going to click on get data. And we're going to get the data from a folder. Okay. Because remember the, the store... Re uh, uh, register information is in a folder. If we click on Excel, we got to we got to import Arizona by itself, California by itself. But we have them in a folder, so we can just click on folder. And then we got to find it, and it's in my H drive. Where is my H drive? We'll go to um, this PC, H drive, and then it's in Power BI tutorial. Okay, and then the files are in this folder here. Okay, so the Excel files for each um, state is in this folder here, and we hit OK. And then we hit a cut OK again, and it's importing that stuff in. Okay, so we have Arizona, California, Nevada, New Mexico, Oregon, and Washington. We have many stores in each one of these states. So we're going to go ahead and we want to click Edit. We're going to edit this. We just gotta wait. Sometimes you gotta wait a while. So we're gonna build our data architecture, right? So far we have, in this hypothetical example, we have the architecture built from each store within a particular state and their sales data from their registers are being downloaded into a state Excel file. And we have that for Arizona, New Mexico, California, et cetera, et cetera. So that part of the architecture is constructed. Now we're going to build the architecture from the files that are on the um, company server. Okay. And we're going to use those files to feed our dashboard. So this Power BI desktop is a... Um, is a... SQL system. It's going to feel like Access, right? But I think it's cooler than Access because it got it has a lot more features and it's much easier to set up in my opinion. Now, if you had built this database in Access, you could actually just import it into Power BI Desktop and then you can build your dashboard. But we're going to do it as if that Access uh, database system doesn't exist. We're going to do all that here because we can. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the query editor, right? So here's our Power BI desktop, and this is our query editor. We've got to do a bunch of these um, um, filter procedures. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name to sales zip data. And I can call it whatever I want, but I'm going to call it sales zip data. Okay, hit enter. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to filter. Now, if somebody mistakenly, open up our folder here. Suppose somebody by mistake saved a Word document into here. Well, we don't want to import that Word document, right? We want to import only Excel files. So we're going to set up a filter to prevent any junk that's in this folder from being automatically imported. Because when we hit refresh, anything in this folder can be uploaded to our dashboard and then pollute it. So we're going to filter everything in this in this folder as .xlsx. Okay, so we're going to go to click down, and we're going to um, click 
text filters e uh, equals dot x l s x and then hit OK. Now if there's a Word document in there it would disappear from this list. So if you had like you wrote a letter to your grandma it would have showed up in here initially but when we filter it that Word doc is gone because we're only accepting in Power BI desktop dashboard this dot xls um, framework or file type. Okay then we're going to right click on extension and transform it to lowercase right just to make sure nothing gets in here that is kind of garbage okay now moving on okay we're going to click on content here and we're going to move, remove all other columns. That doesn't delete it. It just kind of simplifies it for us. So we're going to move all other columns. All right. And so you should have, you should have double arrows here. Okay. Now we're going to add a custom column. We're going to add a custom column. So under the add column tab, click on custom column. And we're going to call this get Excel objects remember all the objects I showed you the tables the worksheets um, all that stuff the pictures we're gonna get Excel objects from these spreadsheets and down here we're gonna type Excel dot work book and then parentheses and we'll double click on content and then comma true and this has an SQL feel to it, right? Has an SQL feel to it. And then hit OK. And then we get these tables here, right? We get these tables here. OK. And the next thing we're going to do is going to, we're going to, we don't, we don't, we don't need this anymore. So we're going to say remove other columns. And now we just have these get Excel objects. OK, then we're going to click on these double arrows here. And to keep it simple, I'm not going to use the original column names as a prefix. That just kind of clutters it up. And then I'll get, and I'll hit OK. And it takes a little while sometimes. OK, now remember all those objects I was telling you about? Sheet 1, filter database, diameter table, di diameter table, sheet 2, print area. We only, we only want... Arizona sheet. We don't want sheet one, sheet two. We want California sheet, Nevada sheet, New Mexico, Oregon, whatnot, right? So we have some garbage in here we gotta get rid of. So how do we take out the garbage? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna filter according to sheet. We're gonna only include sheet. So we're going to type sheet here. Hit OK. Whoop. We made a mistake. Let me edit that. OK. I'll go ahead and delete it and show what I did wrong. I used lower S H E T, right? Let me delete that. Notice it's a capital S H E E T. So let's go back and filter it so that it equals capitalization matters, capital S H E E T, and then hit OK. Then all the other objects are gone, right? But we still have the Arizona file had two extra worksheets, one named sheet one, one named sheet two. So we got to get rid of those too, right? Okay, so this doesn't get rid of these extra sheets. Because people have put some stuff in the Arizona file by mistake, maybe. Um, the Arizona Excel file has an extra couple of sheets that we have to get rid of. So we're going to go back here and we're going to filter text um, contain, does not contain. We're going to click on does not contain. And then sheet. I didn't put one, 
because we have two of them, sheet one and two. So now when I hit OK, we're good to go, right? We got rid of the garbage. So now we have the Arizona table of data in the Arizona spreadsheet, the California worksheet in the California spreadsheet, Nevada worksheet in the Nevada spreadsheet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're close to taking out all the garbage, OK? Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on name. Let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to click on data. Sorry. We're going to click on data. Notice the two little arrows here point in different directions. We're going to click on this and we're going to say, um, oh, sorry. We're going to click on both of these. Control. Click both of those and say remove other columns. So we want, um, whoop. I think that went bad. We'll get rid of this. Remove column. Remove column. And remove column. Okay, now we have name and data, right? Okay, then we're gonna click these two opposing arrows here in data. And we're gonna click, select them all. And we're not, and we don't wanna use the original column name as prefix. I'll show you what happens when we do that, then hit okay. See what it says, data.date. Data.store, data.product, data.payment, data.units, data.amount of sale. We don't, we don't want the data there, so we're going to go ahead and edit that and then delete the data prefix. And then now we just have date, store, zip code, product, payment, yada, yada. So it looks cleaner. And we're going to go ahead and um, change this to state instead of name. Okay. Now, a couple of things. Um, state has to be text, so we're going to change this to text, so just ABC there. Date needs to be date, date, good, and then we got a calendar there. Store zip code, we're going to change that to text because a zip code is really no different than a name of a neighborhood. So we're gonna change that to text. Product is gonna be text. Payment type is gonna be text. Units is gonna be integer, whole number. Amount of sale is gonna be a fixed decimal and fixed decimal in here is a dollar sign. Revenue discount is going to be percentage. And then cost of goods sold is going to be fixed decimal dollars. Okay. So we got some of that formatting done there. Okay. And then we want to... Okay. We're going to add a custom column. And we're going to call this custom column net revenue. Okay, net revenue. And what is net revenue? Well, it's the amount of the sale minus the discount, right? So if, if we take the amount of the sale right here, for example, $19.8, and we multiply it by 10%, we get 1.98. So then we've got to subtract the 19.8 from the 1.98. Another way to do that is to make the 19.8, multiply that by 1 minus this percentage. So that would be 19.8 times 90%. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type number. This is kind of like Python. In Python, remember, we did uh, we had to call the math library to do the score root. 
we typed math.sqrt for square root. So we're gonna we're gonna call this library called number. And in this library, there's a thing called round, because we want to round it to two decimal places. And then this is gonna this looks a lot like SQL. Um, we're gonna take the amount of the sale. So you just double click amount of sale. And we're gonna multiply that by parentheses one minus the revenue discount. And then we're going to close so we have an error here and we have an open parenthesis so we got to close the parentheses oh we had to round to two decimal places and then close the parentheses and we should be good oh sorry We want to close the parentheses here, right? So we're, we're closing the parentheses on the one minus revenue discount, right? And then we want to round. We have a parenthesis here, here that's open. So we need to close the parentheses, but before we close the parentheses, we just need to put in a comma two for two decimal places. Now we have no syntax errors, right? So this parentheses closes this difference, and this parentheses closes this function called round and we're running to two decimal places and we can hit OK. Now net revenue we're going to change to fixed decimal. Okay. Okay, now we don't need amount of sale anymore, right? And we no longer need the revenue discount. So we're going to remove those. So we have net revenue, cost of goods sold, units sold, payment type, product, store zip code, date, and state. Now we can go to home and close and apply. And then you notice over here we have the data being uploaded in the Power BI desktop. And all this has changed over here, right? We have cost of goods sold, date, net revenue, payment type, product, state, store zip, and then unit sold. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save this as Power BI Tutorial. Okay. So it's always a good time to, always good to save. All right. If I click on this, right here this kind of feels like the relationship canvas in access doesn't it right so we have one table in here now we need more data because we need for each one of these uh, store zip codes we need to merge to this table here the managers that manage each store in these zip codes so we're gonna get more data now this time we're going to just choose Excel because this was the standalone Excel file, right? Right there. So if we had done this originally with just Excel instead of folder, we'd have to import these individually. But but since but because these were all in this folder, we could have just import, we used folder to import these source files. But because we had this manager table here, I wonder if we, yeah we can do the preview here, right? We got the preview here. We have this, we have manager and zip code. We can just import the Excel, this one Excel file, right? And then we're gonna choose manager table. We're not gonna, if you if you unclick this, these zip managers the same thing. Why? Because in the manager worksheet table, in the manager worksheet table, we defined this table as a table, right? This we define this data as a table, an Excel object called table. So what we may want to do is we may want to just do the table. Well, let's just go ahead and do the manager table. All right, and we're going to edit it. Okay, then refresh it. Okay, zip code. Remember, we zip codes are really just text, right? It's like the name of a neighborhood, right? And then the manager names are 
um, text. So that's why both these are text. And then that's it, really, right? So we can close and apply. And notice we have new, two, two tables in here, right? So now we're going to draw a line. We're going to double. We're going to click one click, hold down the button, and drag this over to store zip. And now they're connected, right? So if you put your cursor over the line here, we have zip code to store zip code. That's exactly what we want. I'll go ahead and save this. Okay. All right. Looking good. And that right there is completing the data architecture for this dashboard. We the the architecture was complete from the store level to our source files for each state. And those source files are in spreadsheets on the hypothetical company's server in whatever the location is, right? Maybe it's Provo, Utah or Phoenix, Arizona, right? We've now just connected all those stores together in this particular data architecture. And if the data when tomorrow comes and we open this up tomorrow and we want to see how our charts all change, we click refresh and then our architecture is such that any new data that's been uploaded to Excel, when we hit refresh, will be automatically uploaded to this um, dashboard. Okay. Now before we build the dashboard, we want to, we want to build a couple new measures. Okay. We want to build a couple new measures. All right. So let's go to tables here and I'm going to click on sales zip data right I want to create a new measure a new column sorry a new column we're going to go to modeling we're going to create a new column it's going to show up right here I'm going to call that new column um, we're going to call that new column sales type Okay, so we're going to type sales type equal if parentheses. And then I'm going to type S, sales zip data, and I'm going to find units. So I'm going to, I want the units. So if the units are greater than or equal to, or sorry, less than six, or greater than or equal to six, we could actually say greater than or equal to six or less than six, right? And less than six, we're going to say it's a retail transaction. And because retail is a word, we have to put quotes around it to say this is a string of characters. And then if otherwise, else, we're going to name it a wholesale transaction. And then close parentheses. Okay, again, this looks SQL type, SQL ish. So in the sales zip data, there's a column called units right here. If the value is less than six, then we're going to call this retail. So all these are going to be retail transactions that you see here. And we're going to hit enter. And they're all retail, right? And again, we've got to remember there's a lot of data here, right? California's got a lot of stores, a lot of data, a lot of people, right? How many rows are there? There's 434 thousand six hundred ten rows of data here and most of these transactions are retail y'all see that okay good all right now we're gonna call it we're gonna create a new measure called total revenue so now we're gonna create a measure right we're gonna create a measure and this measure is called total cost of goods or total revenue total revenue okay so now the column. The reason why we're this is a me, so we had a measure and we had a column. Sales sales type is a column because we're comparing this value here to some number, right? So we create a new column to change to recode this column. So one retail, two retail, three retail, four retail, six retail, or yeah, six. Six would be wholesale, right? 
So we're take we're all we're doing is transforming this column into a new column. We're going to create a measure when we want to do things like we want to sum over a we want to sum units over a zip code, or we want to sum number of units sold over a state, or we want to sum a measure like units over a date. So that's the difference between a measure and a new column, right? A new column is just redefining a current column. A measure is one where you can do subsets, right? Subsets based on state, subset state on uh, based on date, subset based on zip code, subset based on product. So there's a difference between a measure and a column. So now we're going to create a measure called total revenue. Okay, and total revenue, whoops, total revenue is our measure. Total revenue is going to be the sum, right, of what? Sales, net revenue, net revenue. Okay. So what this is going to do is, because this is modeled as a measure, if the criteria is state, it'll sum net revenue by state. If, in other words, if we do by date, it'll sum net revenue by dates. So that's how this is different than a column. Okay, it doesn't show up here, does it? It doesn't show up here. Okay. So if um, we wanted to know what our net revenues were for October 15th, it would sum these values for all stores for just the date, October 15th. Okay, cool. Now we're going to create a new measure, another new measure called total cost of goods sold. And the same thing applies here. When we do this, we'll be able to sum um, cost of goods sold by state, by date, by zip code, by product type, by payment type. All right? So here we're going to look for a cost of goods sold right there, and then close parentheses. And then we need gross profit, a new measure called gross profit. There's our total cost of goods sold. There's our total revenue. We need a new measure called gross profit. And that equals total revenue total revenue, and you can just type bracket T minus bracket total cost of goods sold. Now let's just see if you can do a T here. Yeah, there you can just do a T and then click on total cost of goods sold. And it puts it in brackets automatically. So we'll hit enter. And it should show up over here. Boom, right there, right? Let's do a new another new measure. And this time we're gonna do gross profit percentage. Gross profit percentage. And it's gonna be a percentage of total revenue. So we're gonna type gross double click, divide by total revenue. Now we could do as a percent of cost of goods sold, but we're gonna do revenue. Okay, and then you hit enter. Okay, so gross profit is dollars, right? English dollars. Gross profit percentage is a percent. Total cost of goods sold is dollars. And total revenue is dollars. Okay. Cool. Now it's time for the visualizations. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And this is the fun part. This is where we're going to create some really cool visualizations. 
So we have this canvas here, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is create a map. See, what you want to do is you want to put your cursor over things that look like maps. There you go, map. The globe is a map. And it automatically puts it right there. So I got this map. And what I'm going to click on is zip codes. Zip codes. And then I'm going to click on gross profit. Boom. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It shows you the gross profit. We can zoom this in. Of our stores in Arizona, for example, right? Which one has the biggest gross profit? Well, the store in Phoenix, Arizona, right? Downtown Phoenix. And then we can zoom out. We can go over to New Mexico. And our biggest store in terms of gross profit is the Albuquer Albuquerque, North Albuquerque store, looks like. The one that's north of Albuquerque. And then looks like our biggest stores are in Washington State. So this store is our biggest store in Washington State. And its gross profit is $1.2 million. Okay, cool, huh? So there's our map. All right. Okay, the next visualization is going to be a clustered bar chart. So we're going to look for a clustered bar chart. Clustered car column chart. Clustered bar chart. Boom. Whoop. I got to go back to map. <laughs> Sorry about that. We need to click off. See where we got this highlighted? We're going to click in the canvas here. We're going to click in the canvas. And then we click on clustered bar chart. I'm going to make this one tall. Okay. And then we're going to click on manager. And we're going to click on gross profit. And then we can go up here and we can sort by gross profit, biggest to smallest. So, and then we can drag this out a little bit to get try to get our names in there, right? Looks good right there. Okay, cool. So this gives our, our best performing manager is Alicia Stacy. And I suspect this person's in Washington State. So if I click on this bar, boom, there's her store, which is cool, huh? And then Jan Petrie, she's in Portland. And then it looks like Charlene is in, what, Corvallis or Eugene. And th then Donnell Sellers is back up in Seattle. Okay, so two of our four best stores are in Seattle. That's pretty cool. The map adjust. Then if you want to go back to the full map, you can just click on the, the bar that you cl had clicked on before. Sweet. Now we're going to create a new visualization. So we want to not be here. We want to click over into the canvas area. We're going to create a line and clustered column chart. Line and clustered column chart. Line and clustered column chart. So we're going to click on that. And we'll maybe put it up here. Okay. And then we're going to just click on we're going to click on a uh, gross profit and gross profit percentage. Click on gross profit and gross profit percentage. And product type. Boom. Okay. But the problem is scale. See these bars here? They're in millions of dollars. These bars down here in percentages. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create, we have the bars, but we want bars next to bars because we can't see these heights, right? So we're going to turn this part, the gross profit percentage, into a line. 
So we're going to drag this here down to okay down to line values. See that right there? They're both under column values. We're dragging down to line values. Boom! Now we can see the scale of the line chart is over here and the scale of the bar chart is over here. Okay, now if we click on Arcella, we can see that her gross profit is greatest on the product Carlotta. But in terms of percentage, her greatest is the product Aspen. So these are product types or names of products, right? So in total dollars, her most profitable product is Carlotta. But on a, as a percentage, her most profitable product is Aspen. And then Jan, uh, Jan oh, that's weird. Oh, Jan doesn't sell any crested buttes. For Jan, her her uh, highest gross profit as a percent is Aspen, and then her best product in terms of total dollar sales is Quad. Okay, so it's kind of a cool chart. And then to get um, company wide, you just click the bar. Okay. Now we're going to click on the white area again. Maybe we'll move this down here, the map. I'll blow it up a little bit so you can see it better. It's really cool. We're going to create another line and cluster column chart right next to this one. Okay, cool. And in this one, we're going to, instead of using, uh, we're going to set up the same way here, except product type is going to be payment type. Okay, so we click back over here. Gross profit, gross profit percentage, and then product type. Or payment type, sorry, payment type. And then, again, we got to move gross profit percentage down to line values, right? Boom. Okay, so company-wide, the most profitable product, or the most... Um, profit comes from Visa payments as in terms of dollar sales but on a percentage the most profitable way of um, payment is from cash but for our Sella Stacy American Express is her highest sales generator or, or profit generator as a percentage but in terms of dollar sales, it's Visa. Okay, so that's pretty cool too. Now to get store wide again, we just click on our sell Stacy. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna create a slicer. The slicers are really cool. Click in the canvas area again and then find the slicer. Slicer, right there. It looks like a wine glass. Okay, and then we're going to click on state. State, 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 state. Boom, right there, state. Now, this is really cool. So, this slicer will do what? The slicer slices it by states. So it'll only look at Washington data, for example. These are Washington numbers, and these are the managers in Washington State. And you can compare, in Washington State, you can compare Arcella to Donella, Donnell, sorry, and Florine. Right? And these stores are all in Seattle. And then so Solomon is in Seattle, Basil's in Seattle, 
Florine is in Se Seattle. Danielle's in Seattle, and Arcel's in Seattle. Okay, so, so it's a really cool slicer. Okay. Now we're going to create a multi-row card, and this is really cool. So click here and then find multi-row card. Multi-row card. Okay, so we're going to put the, maybe we'll put the multi-row card here. All right. Okay, then we're going to click on gross profit. Gross profit is a percent. Total cost of goods sold and total revenue. Okay. And this gives our aggregates for Washington, right? Or Oregon, New Mexico, Nevada, Arizona, California. Maybe we'll put it right there. Okay. We could do other things. We could do a slicer. We could do averages. Let's do averages. Multi row card. We do store averages. Well, let's just do, let's do this. I'm going to click on gross profit. Okay. And then click on, I'm going to drag it over here to fields again. Drag it again. Drag it again. And drag it again. Okay. And then I'm going to change the first one to mean. Okay, let me see here. I should be able to calculate a mean here. I'm not sure why it's not letting me do it. Okay, since these are measures, um, we can't take the averages them. So what we have to do is we have to change them to um, columns. And our original columns are cost of goods sold. So let's just go ahead and um, change it to cost of goods sold. And then we can change this to an average per store. Then we've dragged cost of goods sold, so cost of goods sold back into here. Um, four more times. We can change this one to median. We can change this one to standard deviation. We can change this one to minimum. And we can change this one to maximum. Okay. So for company wide, the average cost of goods sold is $35.31. The median cost of goods sold is $15.87. So the median and the average are way off. The standard deviation is 54, which is huge. The minimum is 1.87 and the maximum is $282. So this is heavily skewed data. And we can we can do the same thing with because the other column is units and net revenue, we can do it three other times. So let me move this up here. I'll move this up here like that. And I'll move the slicer over here as well. I wonder if I could do this. It's got to be a vertical slicer. So we'll make it nice and skinny here. Kind of have it line up with that. And then we'll expand this out a little bit. Okay. So let's uh, let's do it for the Let's do another multi-row card for total revenue. Average, whoops, not total revenue. Um, 
Where is it at? Net revenue, sorry. And we'll get rid of, whoops, net revenue. We'll get rid of total revenue. And we'll change that to average. And then we can just drag this up here four more times. We'll make this one, again, median. We'll make this one the standard deviation. We'll make this one the minimum. And this one the maximum. And we can bring this down here like that. And we have, oh, let's do this. On average, we're making a profit, right? We're making an average, average profit equal to this difference. Um, the median revenue, the median cost, or the median revenue, net revenue is twenty-nine dollars and seventy-five cents. The standard deviation is ninety-two, and the minimum revenue is four point nine five dollars, and the maximum is five thirty-seven, five thirty-five point seven six dollars. And then we can build one more multi-row card for units. So I'll click on units here, change that to average, then drag up average or units four more times, change this to median, change that to standard deviation, change this to minimum, and change that to maximum. Okay, that kind of looks good. Um, is there anything else we want to do? We could do gross profit by state. Let's do gross profit by state. Actually, let's change this. Gross profit. Well, that's fine. Let's do gross profit by state. Gross profit and. So we'll do gross profit, gross profit percentage, and then zip code. Oh, that's too many zip codes. Um, not zip codes. How about date? Well, that's probably too many dates, right? Let's go. Um, state. There we go. So that's pretty good right there, right? And then, of course, we need to bring gross profit percentage down to line values. And maybe pull this up and pull it down a little bit. Stretch it a little bit. Cool. And then, we're, then we have a dashboard, right? We can slice according to state. Washington State, the average store has... An average net revenue of $87 and average cost of goods sold $48.53 average units sold $3.46 so that's our dashboard and the cool thing about this is you can create um, dashboards real easily and then screenshot these and put them in a PowerPoint and do a state-by-state -state comparison and then um, compare that to the national or within the state of Arizona, you can click on Cassie and compare her to her Arizona counterparts. You can compare Tyrone to his California counterparts. Keith compared to his um, Nevada counterparts. Right? So it's, it's pretty interesting. So that is how you build the data architecture for a Power BI desktop dashboard and then how you build the dashboards. Now, the interesting thing here is if you go back to home, if this is tomorrow and all the stores have uploaded their daily transactions 
to their respective states files when you hit refresh here all that stuff all that data is going to be repopulating the current dashboard and all the charts will change that's pretty cool now of course we don't have that new data so nothing changes okay thank you